hello and welcome to yet another Kuba HQ Season 2 tutorial. If you've seen the last one, you're probably wondering, is he trying to show us chromatic aberration again? And the answer is no. I'm simply recording this tutorial on the same day as I did the previous one and thought, you know, why not reuse some of the assets to speed up the process and get those things to you guys as soon as possible. What I'm going to be showing you today is a cool glitch technique I discovered just a few days ago that I like to call Gifify. And I'm not sure how well it's going to look after the MP4 compression, but uh, if you follow the steps, you will be able to see the results on your own screen in no time. So let's start with a blank slate in here and walk you through the entire process of creating this effect. The interesting thing about Gifify is that it's not actually done in After Effects. We're going to be using Photoshop for most of this tutorial and I'm gonna show you how to create an action and then batch process our footage through that action to achieve the final result. The reason for using Photoshop is that After Effects doesn't really like GIF as a format and its compression algorithm is what creates this cool glitching effect. Earlier on I created my image sequence which I'm going to load into After Effects right now and I have it in here in a single folder. It's called Moon Moon or Man Man if you prefer and it's a sequence of 100 images running at 25 FPS. You've probably seen it before during the chromatic aberration demo so let me just import it in here, create a new composition with it and just quickly preview render it or do I even need to? I mean, it's the same thing you've seen before, right? So the moon, the Milky Way, a bit of chromatic aberration and a text floating. So this whole thing is already exported as a sequence of 100 PNG images. And what we need to do right now is to gifify it, to glitch it out and to introduce all those cool artifacts. To do so, let's jump into Photoshop and open one of the images from the sequence. So let me just make sure that I'm in the correct folder. It should be on the desktop in the GIF glitch folder and the moon moon folder. And I'm gonna open just the first image of the sequence and start creating my action. So I have my actions panel opened in here. If you don't have it open, it's under window actions and I'm going to select one of the folders. This is the folder with my actions that I've been designing for other purposes. And in fact, this is image to stencil, one of the first presets I ever released on Kuba HQ. Very useful one. I'm gonna click the new action button and call it GIF, IF, or IY. I'm so bad at spelling Gifify. Right, I even misspelled the name of my own effect. My fault, really. Not a very easy name. So hit record and from file menu, go to save for web and in save for web we're going to switch the preset from jpeg into gif increase the amount of colors back to 256 so that we have the maximum amount of colors possible i'm going to turn off dithering we don't want any dither so no dither switch the palette option from selective to adaptive perceptual also works this still looks pretty much like our original image. We switch off transparency as well, just to make the file size a bit more manageable. But if you look carefully, there is this cool option in here called lossy. And as I increase this value, you may see some of the glitch appearing. I mean, I in fact, come back to zero and just zoom in onto the image a little bit to demonstrate it. So this is at lossy zero. This is at 50, 75, you can see the glitchy wind becoming stronger. And finally, blast it all the way up to 100%, which is the maximum value. And if you look at it, it's creating some really cool effects. So it kind of echoes the shape of the image on the screen and starts looking sort of like the images transmitted by our space probes, etc. Why I didn't attach a preset to this tutorial is I think I want to leave it up to 
all of you to figure out how much of that lossiness or compression you want to apply for some of the footages this may be way too much you may want to go with a smaller value and there isn't really an easy way to implement it as an action but our action will only use two steps so first one is save for web and at this point i'm happy with my settings i'm just gonna click save and go to an empty folder which actually sits right next to my original so this is my original stuff this is my tutorial glitch and just gonna hit save and the second very important element of it is to close the image so i'm just gonna hit this little x and say no do not save at that point i can stop recording my action so with the action ready i can start batch processing my entire footage but before I do so, I will just go to the image I just created. So I'm going to that tutorial glitch folder and I'm going to delete the image we just made. And the reason is I don't want the script or the batch processing to suddenly stop giving me a prompt about overwriting files and possibly failing to perform. We're starting with an empty folder and we're sure that it's going to work. So let's go to file, automate, batch, and that pops up a new window. And since this is the last action we used, it's already preloaded in here. If it's not, you can very easily find it. So I have kubahq icons, Gifify, and I need to decide on my source. So my source is a folder. I want to process all the images inside of that folder. And it's on my desktop in a GIF glitch, and it's called Moon Moon. So I click OK, make sure that everything else is switched off. I don't want to include any subfolders. I don't want to override anything. I just hit OK and watch it go. So this may take a short while, depending on the size of your images. Sometimes compressing really, really large images with GIF compression may take a while. But uh, it's going pretty fast. And if I just look at this tab, I can see exactly which image I'm processing. So we're already 25% through. And if I open my Explorer again, and I'm already in the correct folder, I can see the images of the sequence coming in. So let me just pause this recording for a second and resume once the action completed. All right, so we're almost done. We're processing the image 97, 98, 99, and that's the last one. And this is really all we had to do. Right now we have our entire sequence already glitched out. The only thing left is to import it back into After Effects. There is a tiny little trick to that because After Effects does not import GIF as sequence. And the reason for that is GIF could be an animated file within itself. So it doesn't want to risk the fact that, you know, some of the GIFs could contain multiple frames. It just refuses to load multiple GIFs as an image sequence. So how we would do it is double click inside of our bin and simply select the folder that contains all our images. So note I'm selecting the folder and none of the files and hitting import and this didn't work okay what i need to do is back off select the folder in here and now i have an import folder action okay that's much better all right and now i have tutorial glitch folder with all the files in it so let's select the first one scroll all the way to 99 select the last one and simply drop them inside of our composition. Now, what I'm doing is I'm dropping them on top of our existing sequence. And what that's going to assure is that the length of our composition is correct and the frame rate is correct. All right, so I'm dropping it in, backing up to the first frame and using Alt and right bracket to trim all the layers into just a single frame. And right after that, I'm going to right click on the first of the images and go to keyframe assistant sequence layers. I do not want any overlap. Each of the images is one frame long. So without overlapping, they're going to create a full action video. There we go. So we have all the images finishing right at the end of the composition. And right now we can just pre-compose it and call it glitched footage. And that's really it. That's really all you need to do, provided your compression algorithm or your output is going to 
let those glitches through. Now, unfortunately, a lot of compression codecs that we use these days eliminate this kind of glitches as an error and smoothen them out. You may have experienced that if you ever applied really fine grain to your footage. You compress it, upload it to YouTube or Vimeo, and suddenly you see your footage being completely smooth and all of the grain gone. So I'm just going to show you one more thing in here, which is how to boost the strength of the glitch. So since I pre-composed our glitchy footage on top of our original footage, we already have both of them in the same composition. Let's just zoom in. I'm really not sure how well this all will come through. There we go. This is a pretty good area. So if I switch the glitched footage, I can see the original underneath it. So what I can do is switch its transfer mode from normal to difference. And that's going to remove everything that's repeating on those two layers and leave only the glitch, only the things that are different. Now, what I would probably want to do is rename this composition. So I'm going to call it moon moon underscore glitch only and then drop that on top of yet another copy of the original so i'm gonna grab the original make a new composition then grab moon moon glitch only drop it on top and apply it as an additive effect all right so it looks quite similar but what i can do right now is apply another copy so let's duplicate it and now my glitch becomes much stronger. Now, I think in here I exaggerated a little bit, so that's a bit too much. I may want to back off a bit. So let's lower the second copy's opacity to 50. And since everything still feels kind of muted and almost black and white with just minimal presence of color, I'll just add new adjustment layer on top with the vibrance effect. So Let's add some vibrance to it. Double clicking here. I'm gonna boost the vibrance to 100 and perhaps increase saturation a bit as well. So there we go, without the adjustment layer and after, much stronger, much more visible. And that's really it. If I zoom on a particular zone, and I'm doing that again so that you can see it in the resulting online video, you can see that the effect is really cool. Okay, I picked a really bad place. This is just destroying your eyes. Let's see it in here. Yeah, this is a really cool effect. And you can see how the shape of Y kind of echoes through the space. It looks almost like if any of you are old enough to remember old good analog television sets when the antenna would encounter interference and it would start ghosting the image. It's very similar kind of look and it changes on every frame because GIF algorithm was adjusting continuously for every image we processed. And so that's really it. Really cool little glitch effect that's very easy to apply. Simply export your footage as a sequence of images, compress them using Save for Web in Photoshop, using GIF preset, adaptive, no dithering, and high lossy compression, import them back to After Effects, and tweak if needed. If you end up using this effect or any other preset or rig or kit that I present on Kuba HQ in your own works, it would be really awesome if you could let me know. You can drop me a line via email, you can write a comment on YouTube, on Vimeo or on kubahq.com and simply share both with me and with the community the ways in which you can use those tools plus your own creativity to create awesome stuff. On the next episode of Kuba HQ Tutorial Season 2, we're going to be playing with Super Glue, a cool tiny little expression I created for some of my teammates that help you track both two and three dimensional objects as well as draw lines between them and do a couple of more really cool functions. Until then, for Kuba HQ Tutorials, I'm Kuba Michalski and I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah.